Um, okay, so your character, Tom Selleck, is pretty much obsessed with Bruce Wayne and almost wants to be like him. So, did you kind of like study Jason O'Mara's like the way how he spoke or the way how he did Bruce Wayne to kind of like emulate that and to have that bleed into the movie at any time? No. No. <laughs> uh, and I'm a bit, I, it's part of this is so incredible because you're stepping into this world and you realize how specific it is and how much the fans care about it and the mythology of this stuff and I have to admit at the get-go a lot of this was catch-up for me mm. I was saying over there I dressed like Batman when I was six and went to school so it's not like I wasn't in the desire of the world but I've been a lot of the research has actually come after the fact mm. I'd worked with them before on The Killing Joke and they brought me in and I think they just kind of knew I could do the Thomas Elliott bit um, I learned more as I went now and so Yes, I guess yes and no is the answer. Yes, there's that sort of similarity of those two types of, of men, those two characters, but I wasn't specifically trying to base it off of Jason. I don't think uh, I don't think I even knew he was doing it actually at the time. I didn't, oh, know, I didn't know who was cast in the other roles. Yeah, it could have been him so, or maybe like Kevin Conroy. I, I, didn't know if, I, I think I was thinking it was Kevin, but that may have just been my oh. mistake. But um, So I didn't actually know it was him. I think what's always always cool too is when you have a really good script, it's in the writing. So there's if they've already done so much work, then when we show up, it makes our job so easy, you know. And bad writing is the opposite effect. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I've learned a lot more since the sort of legacy or the history of Thomas Elliot, sort of why he ended up where he was. And I'm actually glad in a way I didn't know as much because I think if I'd known sort of Thomas Elliot's I knew Hush was the bad guy. If I'd known when I was playing Thomas Elliot, sort of his intention in history, it might have been harder to try and play him as a really straight, nice guy. Oh, okay. so. Have you done both of those? I have. How many? Um, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, done a, a fair amount, I guess. My agents say I'm doing all right every time when I call in wine, and I'm like, what? They're like, shut up, you're good. Um, I've done that again. Uh, I've done some commercial stuff. I do, I work on a few video games. I do the smuggler voice on Knights of the Old Republic, um, which has been super fun to step into all these sort of iconic games. I did Paris, France and The Killing Joke. I got to play that other bad guy. Um, I was World Soldier 3 in Kung Fu Panda 2. That was like one of my favorite. <laughs> I actually really was. <laughs> uh, excuse my language. Um, so, uh, commercial stuff, other video game stuff, um, and what's fun in these is they'll also use you for, there, there's a bunch of bad guy, I have one line in the movie like, we, we try to snipe him like a herd of elephants, and that's <laughs> one little line that's super fun, so, so a bunch of different stuff, but yeah. yeah. Can get that voice after pay scale. Totally. Like, they're like, wait, we have these people, they can do these things, no one will know, it's cash out. So... As being a part of the DC universe, like like in this bit, this film particularly, has it made you more interested in being a part of it in the future, or maybe getting more into the background and all sure. that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's been this twofold thing of realizing how much I already was into it as a kid, um, and then and also how little I know about. I was talking over there, like, my dad's a super smart dude, and as a kid, he used to teach us about Greek myth all the time, that was kind of his thing, and I realized, you know, it, 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 that's what comics are, they're like our modern mythology, in the way the characters repeat and come back, and the writing is epic, and the themes, and sort of all that stuff. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's an, it's an honor to be a part of it, it's, it's I get goosebumps, I, it, it took it took a while for it to sink in and I was like oh my god I'm gonna do gosh like you realize how what a big deal it is so yeah it's super cool yeah. thank you yeah, sure. what was your favorite part about filming um I think it's it, I, it's the voice work is so fun because you just get to play you get to play so many characters and you probably get to play characters you necess wouldn't necessarily get to play in, in theater is a little bit like that too uh, you get to break the rules um, so I, I, I think Hush the challenge of Thomas Elliot was fun is really playing him as a genuine man as who has to come across like he truly cares for his friend and is there for him as a friend um, and then Hush is this mega maniacal, really powerful? It was fun. It's it, you know, it's fun to play someone who's truly powerful. 
who isn't doesn't necessarily is flawed clearly psycho but um but at the same time is like no i'm actually especially with batman like i'm moving the chess pieces you know all the villains have a different thing hush has a real command about how he's drawing in all these other villains like he's running the villains and it was like oh this is kind of fun yeah. Did you voice Thomas Elliot and Hush as two different characters that speak? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I, yeah. Totally approached them. And, and I don't know if that was just circumstance. It felt like the process of doing it actually, it ended up feeling up. Like they helped me do that, whether they meant to or not. Uh, I came in and I did Thomas Elliot, and then I came in and I did Hush, and they were two very. You know, it was almost like they're like, hey, we're giving you Thomas Elliot. Oh, and we're also going to give you Hush. I think I was thinking about them completely separately, which really helped. Do they start to kind of merge over the course of the film as the pieces fall in place? Not much. No, they feel the talk after. But okay. 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 My, my answer is no. And I'd like to hear your answer. I don't think so. They feel pretty distinct, you know, which is cool. So when the casting for these is sorted out and you get your role, prefer taking on a, a character like this that hasn't been portrayed so much or would you or, or would you rather take on like more of a classic character and put your spin on it? I think both. I, I mean that's kind of maybe a wimpy answer. Um, they both have their when you're stepping into this world, it's, I mean, I'm in a way, I think of it from a theater background of doing Shakespeare. Like, this is my chance to do Hamlet. Um, this is my chance to do Iago. Um, so, I, and I think because the nature of these parts is they have been done so many times by different people, there's real permission to come in and try your own thing. We were talking about earlier, there's still rules. You know, there's still pretty strict rules about you're going to play within certain... Um, this one was fun to kind of, and I was flying blind a little bit, so I really was. This is my spin on it. Um, I didn't have any. I didn't. I didn't do any kind of hush comparisons or anything like that on either one of these. So these ones felt new and free, which is which is fun. You know, a little scary. Uh, but again, I trust these guys. They will tell you if you're messing up pretty quickly. <laughs> like, nope, nope, nope. That wasn't. Nope, that wasn't good. <laughs> Do you yeah. take um, any of your roles on that? Uh, well, let me start again. Taking on a role like Hush is an iconic, such an iconic character in the comics, and then bringing it to the screen. Um, do you ever think about that, okay, this is going to be you and your voice, and the impact it's going to have? I, I think I'm glad I didn't. Uh, <laughs> still can be a nervous Nelly again I, it's weird this one's really been like dawning on me like if they continue I didn't I didn't have any expectation that I'd like come back and do Hush again I, I just wasn't necessarily thinking that way um, now I am uh, but uh, it's dawning on me like again like oh my god this is this is really crazy. and even if I don't ever do it again it's still it's just getting that moment of getting to do it I'm going to be in the history of this yeah yeah I mean it's why we do it I just, yeah I still think I'm floored you know so pinching myself a little bit but yeah if you weren't cast as Tom Selling and Hush is there another couple in this movie that you would have liked to portray if you were already played by someone else oh I'm sure I mean would love my stab of Batman Batman would be one <laughs> Riddler uh, Joker you know those, those are those are the um, uh, I mean, spoiler alert, maybe, but Scarecrow's in this one. But I don't know if I'd want to play Scarecrow. I was just thinking it's terrifying. The scene of Scarecrow is really scary. Um, so, yeah, Batman's always, probably always, always been there. I, got a, I did a little short film uh, where I got to do Red Hood with Jason Todd. That was super cool. So, you know, too old probably for that one. But, um, no. Uh, <laughs> can't pick something. But uh, Jason Todd is super cool, you know. Um, yeah, I'd say Batman and Joker in this one. Yeah. Yeah. Bane. 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 <laughs> it would be cool. Yeah. I noticed you did not say Superman. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse I didn't even think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I yeah, I did not say Superman. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably Wolverine. Wolverine was always my... I actually auditioned to play Wolverine, and I left that audition going, 
I was really good. <laughs> I, think, I think I might have a shot at this. That is Hugh Jackman. It was one of those Hollywood moments, like, idiot. <laughs> so, always like Wolverine. 